In today's show, we're going to break down a new study finding that sun exposure can increase testosterone and favorable hormone levels in both men and women. Now, I think this is really important because we're in an era now where testosterone levels are significantly declined across the board. We know fertility rates are down. We know that conception issues are arise. So it's really important that we take a step back and go, what is going on in our environment that is causing less people to have successful pregnancies? more and more people to have hormone dysregulation, more gender dysphoria across the board. What is it in our environment that has changed? Now, up to now, a lot of people have pointed to persistent organic pollutants and endocrine disrupting chemicals. Of course, I believe that those you know, phthalates and BPA and all these other factors play a huge role in developmental biology and hormone production. But I also believe that light and UVB exposure directly from the sun has an important and under-recognized and really underappreciated aspect when it comes to health. And so I wanna share with you the results of this study that I actually learned about from Andrew Huberman, Dr. Andrew Huberman. He was on the Joe Rogan podcast and I just love learning from him. He had a live event here in Seattle, Washington back in May and I went and I've been a fan of his work for a long time because he really dives into the weeds and we have similar research interests incidentally for example, uh, light, circadian rhythms, temperature regulation. I'm a huge fan of all these different aspects. And he shared this study, but didn't get into the details because just from time constraints being on Joe Rogan's podcast. So we're gonna take a deeper dive into this. The title of the paper here, it was, in, it was published in Cell Reports from Israeli Scientists last year in 2021. The title of the paper is Skin Exposure to UVB Light Induces a Skin-Brain Gonad Access and Sexual Behavior. And so they looked at both an animal model aspect of the study it was a 24 week mice model. And then they, they wanted to sort of figure out the purported mechanisms like, hey, what are the biologic reasons as to how sun can improve hormone levels in, in mammals like mice? And are those effects translative over in different species, i.e. humans? And indeed they actually found some benefits here and improvements in hormone levels. So it's worth really diving into. And I think this is worth actually really being intentional about now the, the take home message here, I'll just give it to you right up front, is 25 minutes of full body sun exposure during the middle part of the day significantly increases to a statistically significant degree testosterone levels in men and favorable hormone levels in women, mostly estrogen, progesterone, and anti-mullerian hormone. So AMH is a hormone that actually declines as women get closer and closer to menopause. I mentioned that fertility rates are down, conception rates are down, and testosterone levels are down. What's also showing changes compared to historical patterns is menopause is occurring earlier and earlier in women. There's women in their 30s that are perimenopausal. Friends, 20, 30 years ago, this was unheard of, okay? So why is that happening? Well, the scientists speculate that because we're not getting full body sun exposure and we're using all, all this artificial light, our body, namely our skin to the, the brain and the gonads, that axis is sort of tweaked. And we need to sort of improve that uh, to ameliorate the, the side effects of, of con continuous artificial light that is tricking the body or convincing the body that it, you know, confusing the, this axis. And to me, this is really important. And so this is something that I've been very intentional about for a long time is going out, especially when there's, you know, full sun, you know, here in Seattle, that doesn't come very often, but just going outside during and doing work, taking my shirt off, going, taking the dogs for a walk and getting full body sun exposure. You know, I just did that because it feels good. And then when you feel good, you work out more, you go to bed earlier, right? You, you don't want to consume alcohol and junk food. So, but it turns out that that can significantly increase your testosterone level. So I want to dive into the details about how this works because we've heard about the gut brain axis. You know, when you feel sick, you have a stomach bug and then you start to feel depressed, for example, or uh, when you're depressed, then you have GI issues, right? Well, it turns out that there's a skin gonad brain axis. And so that's the, the, uh, hitherto mechanism, we haven't really you know, considered that. We haven't considered the fact that the skin and, and exposure to UVB radiation can actually improve testosterone levels. So I think it's very important and I do want to talk specifically more about this, but first friends, I wanna welcome you back. Thank you for being here. If you're enjoying this content, hit that like button. I know hormones are important to you. Hormones are very important to me. And one absolute killer of your testosterone and also fertility is stress. We know cortisol, uh, can Im negatively impact your sleep. Cortisol can just tank your testosterone. Cortisol can just, you know, really crush your gains from working out. So it's really important, friends, that you have a stress and cortisol mitigation strategy. So that's why I like open.com because they have a bunch of great tools to learn anti-stress strategies like breath work. 
like meditation, like yoga, like Pilates. They have live online classes where you can join people throughout the world to learn things like hyperventilation retention breath work. You can learn vocal releases. These can be very helpful. I've been practicing these. They can help you sort of get out stuck emotions. The live class element with open.com is the best because you can join numerous classes, whether it's yoga, whether it's breath work meditation, right from your phone and connect with people all throughout the world. So you can get a free trial and that includes unlimited access to live and on-demand breathwork meditation and yoga classes with open.com forward slash H-I-H. Again, that URL will be linked below. 30 days free over at open.com forward slash H-I-H for your free trial. Definitely check it out. Manage your stress because stress will just crush your hormones. Believe me, it's, it's true. So um, let's really get into it. First, what, what the scientists wanted to figure out is how does the UVB radiation in animals impact hormone levels? And they figured out that the direct exposure to UVB radiation from sunlight in the same wavelengths as sunlight, it was able to affect their keratinocytes and this P53 enzyme, and that then communicated uh, to the gonads in the brain to increase testosterone levels and assertive behavior by both males and women that you know uh, sort of fosters sexual inter interactions right so when animals are in the sun they get a little more frisky now it could be because the scientists here's some sort of limiting aspects about this data they don't really know if it's directly because these animals and the human aspect of the study that we're going to get to they weren't blindfolded so the scientists admit we don't really know if part of the mechanism could be direct exposure via the eyes and or the skin or the combination thereof and I mention this point because I see so many people wearing sunglasses, okay? So if your hormone levels are not good, if you're trying to get pregnant, if you're trying to just be vital uh, and, and to perform sexually and, and you know, maintain healthy body composition and hormone levels, try to get full body sun exposure without sunglasses because it could be that part of the mechanism here is not just via the skin, it's also via neurons within the brain, within the brain that, are, that are sensing light via the eyes, okay? So, this, so that's something that we need to keep in mind here. But the scientists want to say that, that the um, full body sun exposure uh, in, in both animals uh, and, and uh, the mice uh, improves sexual responsiveness, which in turn increases male sexual arousal behavior. And so the UVB treatment significantly increase the desire for male to female interaction and female attractiveness towards males. So here's what's fascinating, is when biologic females, uh, in both mice and humans, when the female mice and humans are exposed to the UVB, the, the females release more pheromones that cause the males to be more attracted. Now that to me, is quite fascinating and they get into the different glands where these pheromones are released. And I think this is quite interesting because we know that birth control pills augment the release of these different pheromones as well. And that can cause people to be attracted to others that they normally wouldn't be attracted to. And then when the birth control pills go off, there's a change in attractiveness. So this I think is, is quite interesting in terms of making sure that you're healthy so that if you're single and looking to find a partner that you're compatible with, you wanna make sure that you're releasing the proper pheromones so that you attract the right partner. And so it turns out that, that sun exposure can actually do that. And it changes um, some of these pheromone secreting glands, causes them to be more active. And that to me, I think is just really fascinating. And again, what they also showed is that it increased anti-malarian hormone. Again, if you want to have a, have a easier perimenopause uh, transition in the menopause and menopausal uh, state, uh, I, I think there's some benefit to increasing anti-malarian hormone. A uh, sudden drop in that would indicate that your sort of ovarian reserve has declined and that you're closer to menopause and there's hormone changes as a result of that. So you know, if you can improve that and sort of bump that up and have some rhythmicity there, I think that, that makes uh, a lot of sense. So it's just amazing here how uh, in females, the sun exposure uh, impacted the whole gonadal brain axis, uh, in, improving FSH and LH and stimulating the production of both progesterone and estrogen. So that to me was just, was just really fascinating. Now, I wanna get into some other details here that I think is, is quite interesting uh, and the details in humans. So the human aspect of the study, this is the title of the section here, solar exposure enhances human sex related steroids. A really important, now this is a, a smaller study. There was nine men, 10 women between the ages of 18 and 55 years old. And they were asked to avoid sun exposure for two days prior to the start of the study. Then the intervention period was 25 minutes in the sun on a bright sunny midday, okay? 
and um, they quantified the lux of the light and so forth. And then blood samples were collected on the day before the sun exposure and approximately on the same day, the same time of the day during the sun exposure. And what they found is there was a significant positive activation for upstream regulators of uh, beta estradiol, progesterone, testosterone, and estrogen in both men and women comparing no sun days compared to getting full body sun exposure uh, days. Now they went on to analyze and they figured out that certain people are hyper responders to sun exposure compared to others. So if you have darker skin, you know, for example, you have more melanin in your skin, then perhaps you might need maybe 35 minutes of sun exposure a day or 40 minutes of sun exposure a day. So skin tone uh, does impact the UVB, you know, gonadal skin uh, brain axis. So we've got to think about that as well. And that's, we know this to be true with vitamin D. If you're darker skin, then you need more sun exposure um, to induce the same amounts of vitamin D3 from the skin. So we know that to be true. But uh, the, dis the discussion here, I think, is, is quite interesting. Um, and I think, again, the relevance here are people that want to have a smoother transition into andropause and also menopause and people who want to get pregnant and people who have libido issues. And so the scientists say, our data suggests a skin-brain crosstalk in which the skin acts as a dermatoendocrine organ, releasing hormones that affect the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. The mechanism of action may be similar to that of beta endorphins and CRH, which is corticotrophin releasing hormone, which are released from the skin and affect the opioid skin axis. They go on to say the immune system or as of yet unknown regulars. Because the eyes of the mice and human volunteers were not covered, we cannot exclude the possibility that solar UV radiation to the eye affected the observed sexual behavior. UVB exposure via the eye activates the hypothalamic pituitary propiomelanocortican system, which is, an up, which is upstream to the HPA and the HPG axis. But they did note that one sort of mechanism here, and I don't know the clinical relevance of this, but since they did talk about this, uh, and Andrew Huberman did mention this. However, when we depleted P53 from skin keratinocytes, we observed suppression of the UB-induced sexual behavior traits, as, uh, as well as significant decreases in the hormone to the HPG axis, which favor our hypothesis that in addition to the eyes, the skin has an active part in regulating sexuality, okay? Now, I want you to just think about that. The skin has an active part in regulating sexuality. What do we do for our skin? We put skincare products on there that have parabens, that have artificial scents and fragrances, that have persistent organic pollutants that are altering the hormone levels. We are suppressing the UVB radiation on our skin with sunscreen. We are covering up our skin. We're in the shades. We wear hats, right? We're, we are taught that the sun is bad. That's what the mainstream narrative has been. If you're in the sun, you're gonna get cancer. That's what people believe. So they're dousing their kids with sunscreen. We have kids that are going into uh, menarche. They're, they're starting to get menses now at nine years old. This has historically never happened. This, this is incredible. So we are unfortunately augmenting nature uh, and, and the natural biologic processes that would cause natural ebbs and flows and cyclical uh, cycles in hormone levels and testosterone levels. You know, we've known for a long time that men's testosterone peaks in July. Uh, now we know that, you know, that, that peak is much lower for westernized countries compared to, say, countries in Africa, probably because of all the things that we're doing here. So there should be a natural sort of diurnal rhythm here with testosterone, and we now know that the skin plays a vital role. So please, at least get 25 minutes per day before you start lathering up in sunscreen and covering up. I mean, that's just the bottom line here. And take advantage of the fact that if you live in, say, Vermont or Minnesota or, like me, Washington State, during the summer, do your hormone you know, gonads and a favor. Get out in the sun. Uh, there are some people that, that do sunbathing on their perineum and, you know, kind of they're naked and things like that. Who knows if there's, I used to think like, ah, that seems a little extreme. That's kind of like LA-ish, you know, some people do that. But um, look, if the sun can, we now have the data, right? There is this skin gonad uh, brain axis going on. So yeah, maybe if you want to go in your backyard and do the uh, happy baby pose and get the sun where the sun normally doesn't shine, maybe that could help. I would, I would definitely encourage people to do that as opposed to just going on hormone replacement therapy that does have some side effects with regards to fertility, with regards to hair loss, um, aromatization, and things like that. So to me, it's exciting. It's just another natural thing this doesn't cost anything, friends. You know, what we're talking about here, going outside, you don't have to pay someone. You don't have to like buy something. All you have to do is 
take the time to do it. So I've been doing it. I encourage you to do it as well. Get outside, full body sun exposure, 25 minutes per day during the summer months. The data is clear. It can improve your testosterone levels in men and also estrogen and progesterone levels in women, which has benefits from mood, bone, skin, hair, uh, joints, fat, metab the whole thing, right? There's a lot of benefits. So what do you think? And let me know once you start doing this on a regular basis, what you see in terms of changes. I would love to know in the comments below. Thanks as always for watching all the way through. I will link the articles. And again, thank you, Dr. Andrew Huberman for sharing such great content. We very much appreciate your astute uh, ability to uh, convey and translate bench to bedside scientific articles uh, into their practical uh, applications for us. So have an awesome rest of your day and we'll catch you all later. Bye now.